Hello. You know, if you found last week's verse quite challenging, <laughs> it's nothing on this week's verse. This week's verse is Jesus' words in Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. Listen to what he says. He says, I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Wow. And you know, what I love about that is the, it's a verse that forces us to ask the why question but then goes on to provide us with the how answer to the why question. Why? Why Why should we love our enemies? I mean, enemies tend to be enemies for a good reason, don't they? I mean, they tend to be people who don't like us and who may want to harm us and do us down. So why should we love them? Well, there's another verse in the Bible which gives us a hint as to how we should approach the answer to this question. And it's a a verse that says, we love because God first loves us or first loved us. In other words, if God should choose to love us, despite all our many faults and failings, despite all the times we have denied him and given him a bad name and let him down, if God should still choose to love us, why can we not also be gracious towards others, even our enemies. Sounds good in theory, doesn't it? Not so easy in practice. You know, I've found it's easier, far easier for me to love my enemies when they are far away or if I haven't seen them for a while. (laughs) But it's always much harder to love and to forgive our enemies when they happen to be someone we encounter regularly, even every day. You know, like the, the overambitious work colleague who's always saying things about us behind our back or, or the, the, the sneaky neighbour or the, the petty-minded member of our own family. You know, the sort of person who, who you're so sick of their sneakiness and their outright animosity that your heart sinks even every time they come into a room. How on earth is it possible for us to love them? Well, that brings us to the, the, the how part of the, that verse I read out. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Pray for them. You know, when you pray for someone, particularly someone who's your enemy, you'll find two things begin to happen. They may not happen straight away, but they will begin to happen. First thing is, you will begin to see them through God's eyes. In other words, you'll begin to see them in the same way God sees you. And he sees you and me as someone who's not perfect, but who has the potential for good, as well as all the bad. So that's the first thing that'll happen. The second thing that'll happen is is you'll, you'll be getting God involved in the situation. And when God gets involved in the situation, things do eventually begin to change. And, you know, if that's still too much for you to to, to cope with, if that's still too much for Jesus to ask of you, what you could do is, is talk in confidence to a friend of yours and ask them to pray about the situation. I know someone who did just that once and, you know, it made all the difference. And here's the thing, God never asks us to do something that is impossible. I mean, it may be impossible for us to do on our own, but it will not be impossible if we allow God to get involved. And so, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And maybe hearing these words, there's someone specifically who comes to mind. Someone you really, really struggle to like, let alone love, let alone get on with. Why don't you pray for them right now and ask God to give you his love for them. Let's just have a time of silence when you can do just that. Let's pray.
Thank you, Father, for your great love for us, a love that you demonstrated in the life and the death and the resurrection of your Son for us. Thank you for that gift, that gift of grace and forgiveness. Grant us the, the, the willingness to share that gift with others and give us the strength to do so. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have a good week.